Hi everyone, I've got a new playlist for you. So following on from the success of the multiple choice walkthroughs I've done for inorganic and physical chemistry and organic chemistry, I've decided to do some for AS chemistry as well. So these are obviously perfect if you're in year 12 and you're revising for end of year exams or just general revision. They're still great if you're in year 13 because you still need to know all of this stuff. Hope you like the video and if you're not already subscribed to the channel why don't you consider doing that but as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay so make a start so which row shows the correct atomic structure well we'll rule out C and D straight away because they haven't got um, 17 protons gotta have 17 protons for chlorine so now we'll focus on the charge so if you've got a one minus charge you've got one more electron to proton, so B is the answer. Moving on to number two, first thing I want to do is rule out B and D because they're both sulfates. This is a sulfide, so the ions in ammonium sulfide are the NH4 plus ion and the S2 minus ion. So what ratio of those is needed for a neutral overall compound? It is C, NH4 twice, S. And number three, so we've got to be careful here because it actually asks us to calculate the volume of gas. It doesn't specify which gas. So you can see from the ratio, one mole of calcium nitrate actually generates two and a half moles of gas. So if you've got 0 0.005 moles of calcium nitrate, you're going to get two and a half times that in gas. So 0 0.0125. And then you can see all the volumes are in cm cubed in the options. So I'll multiply it by 24,000, which will put it into centimetres cubed, and you get 300. So the answer was D. Moving on to number four, which is not neutralisation. The answer is A, and that's a redox reaction. The only other one in there that sort of sometimes catches students out is D. So if you think about aqueous ammonia as ammonium hydroxide, which is what it is, uh, you could write the equation like this instead. So you'd still get the salt, NH4Cl, but then you'd make the H2O. It's much easier if it's written that way. Number five, the oxidation number of nitrogen in MgNO3 twice. So I've highlighted that nitrate ion because that's all we need to think about. So NO3 with a one minus charge, three oxygens, minus two each. So there's minus six charge coming from the three oxygens. So to leave that one minus charge, nitrogen needs to be plus five, so C. Moving on to number six, so how many orbitals are occupied in a silicon atom? So you'll notice I've already written out the electron configuration for silicon. So if we think about how many orbitals are there are in each subshell, so in any S um, subshell, there's one orbital. Moving on to the P subshell, so there's three occupied orbitals in that 2P6 part. And then if we think about the 3P2, so let's visualise the electrons in boxes, they're arranged like that. So there's actually two orbitals occupied there. So that's a total of eight, so the answer was C. Number seven, so I've already highlighted the electron regions around the nitrogen. So we've got a total of four, one lone pair, three bonding regions. So we can rule out D straight away. Uh, won't be trigonal planar because that's what you get with three bonding regions only. It's definitely not tetrahedral because that's with four bonding regions only. So we're down to A and B, the two pyramidal shapes. So you've got four regions, so your starting angle is 109.5, but that one lone pair, you knock off two and a half degrees from the angle. So you go to 107, so the answer was B. Moving on to number eight, so graphene is just a single layer of graphite. So I've highlighted this carbon here. So what would be the shape around that carbon atom? You can see there are three bonds, three bonding regions. Um, the fourth electron's delocalized around the structure, so it's a good conductor of electricity because of that graphene. But anyway, the shape is trigonal planar, so D was the answer. Number nine, so the first thing I'm gonna do is rule out D because that's got three shells, so it's gonna be either A, B, or C. These are all in period two, so what's the trend in a period? 
generally the first ionization energy increases as you go across the period so it's going to be the one furthest to the right so it's C. Number 10 got this table of successive ionization energies and we're asked which one is for magnesium so just remember magnesium is in group 2 so its big jump up in ionization energy is going to be between the second and the third because you're breaking into a new shell close at the nucleus. So where's that big jump? It's there. So B is the answer. Moving on to number 11. So we've got these two test tubes and one of them's got sodium carbonate in. We're only interested in the carbonate ion in that one. The other one's got silver nitrate in and we're only interested in the silver ions in that one. So they're adding sulfuric acid to both test tubes. So they're adding H plus ions and sulfate ions. So what would you expect to see? First test tube, the H plus ions are going to react with those carbonate ions and make CO2. So you're definitely going to see effervescence or fizzing. So that means we can rule out A and B. Second test tube, the sulfate ions will react with the silver ions and form a precipitate of silver sulfate. So D was the answer. Number 12, so you can see I've highlighted combustion, delta HC. So when you're calculating an enthalpy change from combustion values, it's reactants minus products. The sum of the enthalpy changes of combustion of the reactants minus the sum of the enthalpy changes of combustion of the products. So there's all the numbers, and when you put them in your calculator, you should get minus 129, which is option B. Number 13, so just a reminder there of the definition for structural isomers. They've got the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. So the first thing we can do is rule out F, because that's got an extra carbon. And the other thing we can do is rule out H, because that's got um, a CC double bond, so it'll have fewer hydrogens. So E and G is the answer, so B. Number 14, so first thing I'm doing is counting the longest continuous carbon chain, and it's the one right down the middle, one, two, three, four. So this is going to be some form of butane, so we can get rid of A and B because they're both propanes. You'll notice the remaining options are both 2,3-dichloros, so it's all about the position of the methyl group. So the rule is we've got to use the lowest number, so C must be the answer, 2,3-dichloro-2-methylbutane. Moving on to number 15, so just a quick reminder about E's at isomerism. So these highlighted um, circles are the priority groups. So we've got the priority groups on the same side of the double bond, so they're both up on the way I've drawn that. So that's the Z isomer, E isomer, they are diagonally opposite each other. So um, non-polar molecules could never be Z because you've got this imbalance of the electron density, both sort of push it going in that direction. So we'll cross out the two Z options. So that leaves us with A and B. So I've just drawn up the structures there. So you can see A, we've not got symmetry in A because of this group here. So you can see this, this one here is symmetrical. So this one will be the non-polar one. So B was the answer. Number 16, first thing we can do is rule out A and C because we've got too many pi bonds in that. If you've got two carbon-carbon double bonds, you've got two pi bonds. Next thing I've done is highlighted the sigma bonds. So in the carbon-carbon double bond, as well as the pi bond, you've got one sigma bond. So the total of sigma bonds in this molecule is 12. So the answer was D. Number 17, which equation shows a propagation step in the mechanism? So A is wrong because that's an initiation step. B is wrong, that's a termination step. So C and D both look like um, propagation steps, but C is wrong because of that H radical. So D was the answer. Number 18, which alcohol can be oxidised by those to form a ketone? So ketones form from secondary alcohols. So basically, we're looking for the secondary alcohol. So it can't be A because that's primary. B is the answer because that is a secondary alcohol. It can't be C because that's tertiary, and it can't be D because that's primary. 
19 is testing our knowledge of reaction mechanism types. So step one, we've got an alkene reactor there, so that's electrophilic addition. And step two, we've got a haloalkane there, so that's nucleophilic substitution. So B is the answer. And finally, number 20, so there's just a reminder, the rate of hydrolysis for the haloalkanes due to the carbon-halogen bond strength, and there's the order. The carbon-chlorine bond is the strongest, so that's hydrolyzed the slowest. The carbon-iodine bond is the weakest, and that's hydrolyzed the fastest. So A is wrong because the carbon-iodine bond enthalpy is not greater than the carbon-chlorine one. B is wrong, it's got nothing to do with polarity. C is wrong because it's got nothing to do with greater delta positive charge. So D must be the right answer. CI bond requires less energy to break than CCL. Yes, of course.